So, dear student, this is as strange for me as it's for you. I'm looking at a camera or a teleprompter, and I'm trying to imagine you behind the screen. So, if you were in my office and you asked me a question, I would go to the blackboard, just like the one shown here, and I would write formulas and try to explain things step by step, just as it's done on this blackboard. This blackboard is actually taken from the second part of this course, uh, part on zeta functions. So, we will start in this mode and then we'll be switching in the course. Sometimes I'll just talk on the blackboard, but please uh, join the forums, ask questions. Uh, we here at Georgia Tech will try to answer them if the other participants in the course don't answer them. And if there is something that's not clear about this video, just tell us. You know, we can re-record them or we can add additional material. So imagine that this is really a relationship between a professor and a student, even though the fate has taken us apart. So, we start the course by a very general discussion of what is a dynamical system. And dynamical system is something that's very intuitive. It's a very classical notion. It's how Babylonians thought about these things. They thought that there was a celestial orb. And, uh, you know, so that is what we call a state space. We'll use a little script M to do this. And in it, there is a point, a representative point, X. And the idea of state space is that if there is a D numbers, a D could be one, two, or a hundred thousand or a million, but that's what we call a dimension of the state space. If D numbers uniquely this define the state of your system, we'll denote it by little x at time t. That is a dynamical system's state space. The next ingredient to make it of any interest to use word dynamical. Now, before we do that, you have to understand that while you might think of a state space as, uh, you know, a billiard ball on the table and its position, it's typically much higher dimensional. So even it's for billiard ball on a t uh, table, it's not only where that ball is, but it's only also how fast it's moving. So even for a billiard board, you need four numbers to specify. In that case, we call it a phase space if it's Hamiltonian system, but that's not so important. But kind of dynamical systems we'll think about can be very, very complicated. So here is an example. This here is an instant of a fluid visualized in some way that has to do with vorticity of fluid, etc. But you can imagine there's a pipe, there is fluid in it, and you take a snapshot of it sometime. And this is a state of the fluid. If I have coordinates and values of all the numbers I need to specify, it, that's an example of state space. This one could be 100,000 dimensional, and amazingly enough, today experimentalists can actually measure this. So this is taken from the thesis of Casimir van Dorn in 2004. A graduate student could actually measure a state of a fluid. So that's another extreme what you mean by state space. So when we state, say state space, we might mean something very, very rich. It's not just, you know, position or where your car is in a parking lot or something like that. So, the next thing we need in dynamical system theory is to describe the dynamics. So the idea of dynamics is that we define a law which describes what happens to every point in that state space. So if I start here, I will move in time to someplace here, time till later, and that will be described by a law 
which we often call a map, at least mathematicians like to call this time-forward map. And for dynamical systems theory, this law has to be deterministic, meaning that each point at time zero traces out unique trajectory, like this one, and ends at the unique point time t later. So x at t is starting at initial time and applying our law of, let's say, motion or evolution. And it's crucial that this is unique, at least forward in time. We will discover very soon that we actually care not only about individual states, but the much more useful notion is to care about whole regions of state space. You think of this as having a point which is not defined with infinite precision. So if I specify position with, you know, 10% precision, uh, then my initial thing will be some kind of ball of points which all evolve according to this precision, and that will end up time till later in another ball. So flow will map entire regions of a state space into regions of the state space. The third condition, which is now more mathematical, is that we not only want to have unique outcome for each initial point, but we would also like dynamical systems to be smooth, meaning that if I make a little change in initial condition, for short times, this will not have large repercussions, meaning that neighboring points will remain neighboring points. It's not that like I hit some kind of knife edge and my neighbor just goes left and I go right. <clears throat> now, we will try at least for finite time to stay together. So smoothness will be very essential for us. Mathematically, what we say is that we want the system to be differentiable as many times as needed. So that brings us to being able to define deterministic dynamics. And deterministic dynamics is state space plus evolution rule, which has unique future. So dynamical system uh, is the pair state space and the law of motion which doesn't have to be time, there are some more abstract dynamical systems, which is the law of evolution, law of motion. If you have learned Newtonian mechanics, which you have, otherwise you wouldn't be in this course, you would not, uh, that would be the most natural thing to think about. So then there are two kinds of uh, dynamical systems that we'll consider. And uh, depending on the context, and they are really one-to-one -one related, but sometimes we think of evolution as evolution in a continuous time. So we look at our clock and, you know, every microsecond something happens. And in that case, we call the law of flow. Neighboring, neighboring points in state space are moving like fluid is moving. Or you can imagine a different situation. You are in a discotheque and there is a strobe. And as you dance, you get frozen images at every strobe. So the time now becomes integer. Integer. And then your law of motion is a map that says, if I was in this position at time t or n, I'm at time n plus one, I'm later. So the time can be considered either discrete or continuous, as you'll see very soon, we can go back and forth between the two. And sometimes integer time is more useful.